Hey everyone, welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to your readings for October 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. Right off the bat, I want to go ahead and give a big old shout out to my Libras out there. We are officially in Libra season here in Western astrology. So ha very, very happy birthday to the Libras out there. I also want to go in and slip in a little uh, early little happy birthday to the uh, October Scorpios. Yes, happy birthday to you guys. We will be entering your season next. So please keep in mind that these are general readings. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also keep in mind that because these are general readings, the situations can go either or, okay? It can go either way. Now, I am specifically speaking to the zodiac sign in question, so mostly the message is going to be for them. But if you are cross-watcher, say, for example, or you are what you are you do have the sign that the, that is in question in the reading that you're watching and yet the story that i'm telling is flipped is vice versa then go ahead and flip it for yourself okay place it as it fits into your life but please be very careful not to place things or try and force things that don't fit into your story or your situation into the into positions because that's just going to confuse you and throw you off okay so another thing that i want to mention um uh, oh, first, actually, what I want to mention is I'm doing a little bit something a little bit differently this month. Um, I had been using the Sacred Rebels Oracle for a few months, which was doing great. But because we're now in fall and it's October, I wanted to change it up a little bit. Um, and I got the brilliant inspiration to use the Fairy Forest Oracle deck this month. And I'm really super excited for you guys to see what comes out. Because in some of these readings, they're all pre-recorded um, before I record this this intro but uh for some of these readings the oracle guidance that comes out from this deck is so spot on it's a little scary <laughs> okay um also the other thing that i want to mention especially for those of you that are new if you are new to the channel what's up thank you so much for tuning in welcome to the family but here at divine conversations we do not focus on love yes sometimes love will come out uh if necessary and I, and in no way am I trying to stop that from happening. But the general focus or the main focus here on Divine Conversations is to focus on bringing yourself into a sense of union with yourself, bringing to yourself into a sense of wholeness with yourself, and also just having a conversation with spirit, all right? So what's coming through in these messages for the monthlies, even for the dailies, if you check out Morning Coffee, the messages that come through are just a conversation. What does spirit have for you at that time what does spirit want you to know for that time period or that cycle in your life that you're going through all right with that said keep in mind that all of these readings are timeless yes so just because this is dated for the month of october it doesn't mean it has to resonate for you in october you could come across this reading in february of 2020 and beyond and it may still resonate for you okay time is an illusion and energies are fluid all right so just take it as it resonates if it resonates for you at that time then take it if it doesn't don't worry about it come back later maybe it will all right, guys. <sighs> so with that said, I think let's just get straight to it. Yeah. <laughs> hey there, Virgo. Welcome to your reading for October 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right, let's get to your pre-shuffle energies here. You've got the Nine of Swords, Strength, the Hierophant, and the High Priestess. So you have, you could be dealing with a Piscean, potentially, with this high priestess energy here you could be dealing with another Le with a leo or you could be dealing with a taurus doesn't have to be any one of those all right just throw that out there but it feels like somebody is ooh, is up against something pretty serious now the seriousness here could all could be indicated by the three major arcanas. All right, that's fine. The high priestess, Leo, I'm sorry, the high priestess, strength, and the hierophant. You do have counterparts here with the hierophant and the high priestess. Both represent spirituality, both represent religion, wisdom, okay? The hierophant, however, represents uh, three dimensional aspects. So religion, society, uh, dogma, university, um, government, uh, law enforcement, tradition, social norms, uh, 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 family, um, uh, family traditions, hierarchy, that kind of stuff. 
The high priestess represents spiritual wisdom um, and universal wisdom, all of that stuff that you can't really logically make sense of. What I'm, get, I'm getting a few things with this combination of cards here. First of all, I'm getting that someone is needing to stand up against the, high, the Hierophant. The high priestess, what the high priestess represents in wisdom, spiritual wisdom, um, uh, universal wisdom, you know, the laws of the universe, that kind of stuff. That is what's influencing this. This need to stand up against, because I feel like someone is getting a deeper understanding of the truth of our reality. And there's kind of, kind of coming out of the illusion of the Maya that I, you can see here in the Hierophant. Another thing that I'm seeing here is someone may be in the process of understanding how they have, their ego may have run amok. They've allowed themselves to run amok with their ego. They've been living from the place of their ego for so long. And now they're being faced with needing to come out of that. And that's creating anxiety with the Nine of Swords. I'm not going to lie, Virgo. This feels pretty serious. Like, this is life-changing. And I'm not saying it's life-threatening. You might feel like it's life-threatening. You might feel like your whole world is crumbling, like your, your life is about to be over, or some shit like that. Dogma is something that just came forward. I really feel like somebody is kind of waking up to the illusions of reality or at least this three-dimensional reality. And with the high priestess energy being the influence here, being the overall, it's like you're coming to terms with what truly could be possible rather than what the Hierophant says is or is not possible. As far as to whether you're taking action towards this, I don't know. We'll have to see in the rest of the reading. But right now, I do feel like you have an awareness of it. And that's creating anxiety with the Nine of Swords. And what's also creating anxiety here is knowing that you've got to do something about this at some point, or you're just going to be stuck in this same old energy. And I mean, it's definitely a situation in which once, once you wake up, you cannot go back to sleep. And I think someone is recognizing this, which is only creating more anxiety because now not only are you in a position where you know that you know a, a change would really benefit you would really benefit from a change being made now that you're aware of this stuff and you're also kind of aware of the fact that you're never not going to be able to unsee it this was all you'll you're kind of like on a conscious level you're kind of like in this energy of well this is always going to be nagging at me so i'm going to have to do something about this eventually and oh shit now what do i have to now what do i do it's okay virgo i promised you I promise you, Virgo, it's going to be okay, all right? I mean, think about it this way. Last month, I just remembered this. For, for the month of uh, September, we were talking about how there was a way out of some sort of conformity, right? Well, it's, it looks like, it, honestly, Virgo, it looks like with that high priestess energy, you're, you're about to or you're in the process of finding your way out of this. But of course it's going to create uh, anxiety for some of you you're seeing not taking those for some of you you're seeing the fact that you are gonna have to step on some toes a little bit and this is really just to assert yourself so that you can you know strike off on your own in some way that's really not a bad thing at all Virgo it's actually a very good thing would you rather be a slave to the hive mind or a free thinker Choosing, making choices, making decisions for yourself rather than what the books say about it, right? Going by the book. <clears throat> All right, last shuffle. And then we're going to see what we've got for you, Virgo, for the rest of your reading here. I'm going to put my phone on vibrate.
What is all of this anyway? All kinds of shit. Okay. I'm just going to put you on vibrate. And now we're going to get to the rest of your reading, Virgo. Here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Virgos at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of October 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, we're giving this five shuffles and we'll see what we've got for you. For my Virgos, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of October 2019. Two. Three for my Virgos, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of October 2019. Four. And a five. Whoop, whoop. There we go. All right. Boop. All right, Virgo. Overall energy, we're starting you off with, oh boy, the lovers. Gemini energy. Oh boy. Divine partnership, divine union with the self, or is this a choice? The lovers is definitely about a choice most of the time, a lot of the time. Uh, and when it is about a choice here, I definitely do say that it is a choice between vice or virtue. Uh, vice being Adam in the burning brush. So ego, the um, thoughts, opinions, and feelings and desires of other people over your own. Or are you going to choose virtue with Eve in front of the tree of, is this the tree of knowledge? Tree of knowledge, or is it, yeah, I think so. And in that case, that for me is choosing what your heart desires. Okay, underneath the lovers, you have the king of wands. Leo energy. This could be, Virgo, I think this might be you. This is, and, and, and it's especially in terms of this choice with the lovers here, this is you figuring or seeing what it is that you want and not being afraid to go after it, not being afraid to go over it. The King of Wands is very much an energy of saying, look, I want this, this, and that, and I don't give a flying fuck what you have to say about it. I'm going to do what's right for me, or I'm going to go after what I want. Now, keep in mind... The King of Wands, of all of the cards, of all the court cards in the deck, of all the cards in the deck, the King of Wands is the one that most closely resembles narcissism. But that's not what we're dealing with here. And actually, it's funny. Spirit just said, mm, if so, this is a healthy dose of narcissism. Because this is someone taking their power back and choosing for themselves. That's excellent. Underneath the King of Wands, you do have the page of swords Ooh, somebody is hovering somebody is spying someone is trying to gain information underneath the page of swords the page of wands to me the page of wands is a card of self-discovery i do see it as a minor arcana version of the hermit the hermit being your energy virgo um The pages can also be messengers. Someone may want to send a message here. Someone may be, may have redefined what they wanted, may be passionately influenced towards something, towards going after something, or maybe someone, especially with the lovers, we could be talking about a divine partnership, maybe a twin flame situation. divine union. And what I'm getting here, now Virgo, this could be you or this could be someone else that you're connected with, i.e. maybe even a divine partner. But um, 
I feel like somebody here's no, somebody here knows what they want. Somebody here wants to send some sort of message, and they may be in the process of trying to figure out how to do so. Figuring out when the right time to strike is. That's absolutely what the King of Wands also represents. It's like knowing what you want, not being afraid to go after it, but also not being afraid to sit back and wait for the right time. That's definitely what I'm seeing here. Someone is inspired to create, to start some, some new sort of creative project, some new sort of passion project, to send some sort of passionate message, and are, they're just waiting for the right time to strike. You may even be waiting for a sign from the universe with this lover's card here, because my attention is being drawn to the angel in between these two individuals. You may be, this person or you, may be waiting for the right time the, 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 the green light, basically, from spirit, the universe, whatnot, whatever, your higher self, their higher self, whatnot, whatever, in order to make this move. But I do feel like someone knows very much about what, the, what it is they want. And yes, we absolutely could be talking about partners, divine partners, counterparts here, especially with the Hierophant and the High Priestess that came out in the beginning of your reading because those two are counterparts to each other. The Hierophant, especially if we're talking about like twin flames, the Hierophant being the divine masculine, the high priestess being the divine feminine. Okay. Alrighty kids, so let's get on with the rest of your reading here. First half, second half of the reading. You could look at this as the first half, second half of your month. Take it as it resonates, whatever works best for you. Yes, first set of surrounding energies for you, Virgo, in the first half of your reading here. You've got, uh-oh, mm. the Seven of Swords. Que es esto? Mm? What's this? <laughs> I mean, I, I really don't feel like this is a bad thing. The Seven of Swords doesn't have to always be a bad thing. Yes, for the most part, it represents cheating, lying, lying stealing, uh, trying to get away with something. But also, it really could just be keeping something under wraps. Not really trying to discuss it. And in effort, and in, 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 and you could be keeping something under wraps in an effort to keep somebody from trying to sabotage you. That is valid. Let's see. Seven of Swords is coupled with. Oh God. The Five of Swords. But isn't this what I just said? Keeping something under wraps to keep someone from sabotaging you? Kind of what that feels like. And it's funny because the five swords here are the five swords that this individual is walking away with in the seven of swords. That's really interesting. I really feel like somebody is walking away from some sort of strong conflict, some sort of lose lose situation. And the five swords that this individual is trying to escape with are the same five swords that other people would try and knock you down with. Or try to use the, the five swords that some, that's what I'm getting here. Someone, was, someone would want to try and use whatever it is you're trying to do. They're going to try, so there are other people external to you that are going to try and use that against you. So this is why you want to keep it under wraps. Perfect. Perfect. That makes a lot of sense. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Virgo, in, this, in the first half of your reading here, you've got uh, the Nine of Pentacles. This is also more Virgo energy, all right? Independence, autonomy, bachelor, bachelorette energy, sure, maybe. But abundance, um, rewards for hard work done well. Being independent, being strong, being able to stand on your own. Maybe even being an entrepreneur or some shit like that. But this is the energy that I feel that you've really grown into, Virgo. 
Nine of Pentacles is coupled with strength again. That's right. That's right, Virgo. This is you. This is stepping you into your power and staying in control, keeping things under wraps, maybe even being patient. This is you absolutely being in your power. Could even be the person that you are connecting with also being in their power. Or if we're just talking, if you're cross watching or if we're talking about someone that is connecting, you are connecting with, they could really be in their power. But for the most part, I'm speaking to the Virgos here. So for the most part, this is you. This is very good. And I want to say this is what this Seven of Swords, Five of Swords energy has taught you to be. Very stable, very grounded, very independent. There is a level of codependency here that it seems you've learned from that you don't ever want to be a part of again because it's only going to tear you down. It's only going to keep you at the mercy of those who are who really are just trying to control you. I think I really feel like some of you have figured out that you're the only way you're truly going to be happy is if you are living for yourself, doing what it is you want to do instead of doing what it is others want you to do. Now, there are some situations in which you, what you want is in line is in alignment with what some other people want, but again, the only reason you would be a lot would be maybe even entertaining these people is okay fine so there's a little bit of narcissism there king of wands all right it makes sense but the only reason you would really be aligning with these people is because they you know that you can further your goals by teaming up i guess but you're still very much an independent individual okay Look, as long as you're not trying to get away with anything, as long as you're not trying to steal from people, backstab people, betray people, whatnot, whatever, there's really nothing wrong with that. But now be careful because those individuals, five of swords, those individuals may have it out for you. You never really know. Okay. Your challenge in the first half of your reading here, Virgo. Eight of Pentacles. All right, cool. And this is something that I don't think are, is really, uh, Virgos are a real, really a stranger to. The mundane work, the hard work, if you want to look at it that way, the craftsmanship, the doing things over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Yes, to get the same result. Obviously, with this eight of pentacles, you want eight identical or however many identical pentacles, especially if you're going to sell them. So that's where the craftsmanship comes in. But it's the perseverance to get through that work. That's a bit of a challenge right now. Doing the hard work that's going to get you to where you want to be. Now, the hard work, I don't know. That is, I mean, take it as it resonates. You may not necessarily really need to do much physical work, but you have to do a good amount of mental, mental work. That's not always easy, right? But it's worth it. Eight of Pentacles is coupled with the Six of Swords. Moving forward. That's your challenge. So it seems here that you, you're being challenged with doing the work that you need to do in order to leave, your past, leave the past behind you. In order to maintain this, this, uh, this autonomy, this nine of pentacles and strength combination. In order to move away from situations that were deceptive. From situations that um, you felt like you, have, you can't be honest And I do feel like you are doing this work, but not really talking about it, keeping it under wraps, which is not a bad thing, especially if that's what your environment calls for. You know what I mean? If that's what you've learned about how things operate around you and you're finding that that's toxic and you want to get away from that, obviously you can't go broadcasting it or those same people are just going to use that against you. So, okay, that makes perfect sense. Your closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading here, Virgo, you have, aw, the star. Wish fulfillment. You're headed in the right direction. Your intuition is correct. Keep going in this direction, is what the star is saying. Things may not be very clear right now, but ultimately, your wishes are going to be fulfilled. Your desires are correct. Your desires are in alignment. These are things that I'm hearing here, okay? 
The star is coupled with the two of cups. Oh, Virgo. Look at you. You're so sweet. <laughs> um, uh, your desires are correct. You have the two of cups and you have the lovers here. So I feel like there is some sort of relationship that somebody desires here. It may be unconventional. Okay. It may go against the norm, which is what someone is facing when it comes to the Hierophant, which came out in the pre-shuffle. And yet the universal wisdom of the high priestess is saying, oh no, my child, this absolutely is right for you. Don't let the Hierophant stop you because he doesn't see all that there is. He refuses to see it. Don't you remember all that stuff he's been shoving down your throat about what existence is and, and, and the dogma and fearing God and you are unworthy and all, don't you remember all that? So don't worry about it. Because ultimately he is only a stepping stone to get to me, says the high priestess, the real wisdom. You also have three depictions of divine counterparts. You had it in the high priestess and the hierophant because those two are counterparts to each other, the masculine and the feminine. You have the lovers here, and now you have the two of cups, which in my opinion, as a reader, is the minor arcana version of the lovers. Okay? I really do feel like some of you have a desire here to come together with someone and I do feel like that's going to happen. It's coming. You two are aligning. You're matching up for sure, energetically speaking, which will then translate into a physical union, okay? Uh, what I want to say about the current energies, or no, I'm sorry, not the current energies, the, the, the first half of the reading here before we get into the second, someone is facing taking their power back or standing in their autonomy, standing in their own truth with this Nine of Pentacles strength card next to the Seven, uh, seven and Five of Swords, okay? All right, let's move forward. Getting into the second half of your reading here, Virgo. Excuse me. First set of surrounding energies. You got ta. Oof, the Queen of Swords now. Uh, someone may have been shutting you down. You have maybe you maybe have been shutting someone else's down. Someone else down. Maybe at, uh, maybe if we're talking about the the course of this divine partnership that seems to be coming out here, maybe the both of you have shut each other down in various times. Uh, what I want to say is it's really time to use that energy constructively. Use that energy to your advantage to help you get what it is that you're desiring with this King of Wands energy instead of using it against you. I, I just heard that so clearly. Stop using that against yourself. Instead of focusing, well, no. Focus on cutting out the, the superfluous bullshit that is keeping you from getting what it is that you want, the star. Let me do it this way, what you want, the star with the two of cups, okay? Queen of swords is coupled with, yeah, the eight of swords, all right? Start using this energy of the queen of swords to cut you out of this mental entrapment. And what could this mental entrapment be? Well, it really could be symbolized by that hierophant energy that you're needing to have strength against that is causing some sort of anxiety with the Nine of Swords. You have the power to cut yourself out of this, but you have to use it for your advantage. You have to use it, you have to stop using it against yourself. Okay. Second set of surrounding energies in the second half of your reading here, Virgo, you have the Seven of Cups. Illusions, lies, confusion. And honestly, I feel like this energy here with the seven of uh, the seven of cups is 
all of the different traps that your ego help you fall into that keep you from really pursuing what it is that you want. That's what I'm seeing with the Seven of Cups here. It's like your ego constantly throwing up all kinds of bullshit to get you to question or at least like stop doing what it is you're doing when ultimately your higher self, your, in, your, your intuition, your guidance, blah, 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 are leading you in a certain direction. Seven of Cups is coupled with the Emperor. Stay solid in what it is that you know that you want, Virgo. Don't let the confusion sway you. Don't let your ego come in and start pulling you this way and that. Stand firm and move forward with what it is that you know that you want. Take your power back and create what it is that you want for your life, not what others want for you, for you, right? And that's a part of all this different swirling stuff with the Seven of Cups here. You got all of this input from all these other people. It's like you're trying to please everyone else while doing the bare minimum for yourself. That's not fair. It's not fair at all. Your challenge in the second half of your reading here, Virgo, the Three of Wands. Being on your path, doing what it is you know is right for you, following through with what you have chosen, King of Wands, what it is you know that you want. Also, I'm getting an energy of waiting for a return on an investment, but also I'm getting an energy of working on receiving that return, like keeping the momentum going. It's as if you've made a decision, Virgo, and yet you're, you haven't really taken the action towards getting it or towards following through with it. Or maybe someone you're connecting with. Okay. Three of Wands is coupled with the Nine of Cups. Satisfaction. Wish fulfillment. You have both cards of wish fulfillment here. And what I'm getting here, Virgo, is if you want this wish fulfillment to come through, if you want to feel or achieve or receive the satisfaction that comes with getting what you want, you got to start taking some steps towards it. You've got to take action. The Three of Wands is about taking action. The Ace of Wands is the inspiration. The Two of Wands is the choice. The Three of Wands is now following through with it. In order to receive your wish fulfillment, in order to receive that which you desire, in order to receive that which you've chosen to acquire, you've got to take some action. You've got to start moving in that direction. You've got to start getting the momentum going. Okay. All right. Closing message or potential outcome, Virgo, in the second half of your reading here, you've got the Three of Pentacles. Self-mastery, working together, being ready to work together. Teamwork, being a team player, but for the right reasons. Building your sanctuary even, building your sanctuary. Yeah, that's interesting. I have never, I've never really seen it that way before but that just came through three of pentacles is coupled with the eight of cups oh boy oh boy virgo so it leaves it seems you're gonna have to leave something behind your old life the indoctrination the energies of the hierophant you're gonna have to leave all the past old stuff the outdated stuff behind there is a new world order coming into play. You're, either you can get on the bus or you can watch it drive away. I mean, it's up to you. But you've got to take your power back in order to do so, right? You've got to make this decision for yourself. Nobody else can make this for you. The lovers, there's that choice. There's that choice. What is true to you? What does your heart want? Are you going to choose vice or are you going to are you going to continue are you going to continue choosing vice or are you going to finally choose 
virtue for a moment. And no, I'm not talking about like sin, sinners type stuff. No, I'm talking about virtue in the fact of what is it that you want, Virgo? Okay, let's get your oracle guidance here. To close out your reading for the month of October, For the month of October 2019, for my Virgos, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Here we go, guys. There it is. Woo! Wow. All right. Uh, another, someone else got this card. I don't remember which sign it was. But we have Elf Struck. Number, card number 18. Enchanted, Beguiled, and Spelled. Eighteen boils down to a nine, which is an ending. You are dazzled, amazed, astounded at presence. Your head a whirl with otherworldly visions and thoughts. You may be a little obsessive and unable to balance at present. It is all or nothing, and the momentum is exhilarating and intoxicating. You have given your all to your new passion. You have discovered that you truly do have the power to create what you want and need in your life. So please take time out to contemplate just how these miracles have come about, the coincidences and connections that have brought you to this place. There is so much to be considered, to think about, and the thoughts you have at this time are so immense and fully flavored that, you, that they are creating the next steps in your life, drawing them to you, weaving and creating your future. Excuse me for a second. <coughs> Excuse me. While you are currently so devoured by the desire to push forward, use this energy. Do not allow your current state of enchantment to be sabotaged or hijacked for other purposes than your own. That's right, I remember it was Aries that got this which must be for the highest good. Let me say that again. Do not allow your current state of enchantment to be sabotaged or hijacked for other people's, uh, for other purposes other than your own, which must be for the highest good. Soon the intensity will ease, balance, will, balance shall make a return, and life will take on something like normality again. But now, having tasted magic, you can never return to how you once were. You are forever changed, friend. That's exactly what we were talking about. Especially with the Seven of Swords and the Five of Swords, not allowing somebody to sabotage you, not, some, not allowing someone to hijack your energy. Also, in the beginning, when we were talking about the fact that once you've woken up, you can't go back to sleep, there's something here that someone can't, cannot unsee. And either you can roll with it and get it get her done, or you can allow it to plague you and haunt you until you finally take some move, make some movement, take some steps. Okay. But ultimately, Virgo, this is good. This is very good. And it looks like we're progressing. For sure. So excellent. Good for you, Virgo. All right, so I'm going to leave it there. There you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you'd like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All of the information is in the description box below. With that said, I hope you guys have a great month, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of November. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.